Popovich patrols the outskirts of the city in his Abrams tank, ready for anything. We heard a lot of bad things about Fallujah. We heard it was uh, you know, a place that even Saddam couldn't control when he had Iraq. Even Fallujah stuck their middle finger up at Saddam. This city of 300,000 has become the nerve center of the Sunni insurgency and headquarters of Al-Qaeda in Iraq. The first several days of patrols are relatively calm for Papadich. Then, in late March, four American security contractors lead a supply convoy through the city. They take a shortcut and without alerting Marine commanders, head straight to the heart of Fallujah. Even Marines themselves have steered clear of the area. I don't know why they were driving there. I certainly wouldn't have described that area as being militarily secured at that time, no. I, I wouldn't have advised going through there, that's for sure. The contractors are savagely ambushed, shot, burned, and dragged through the streets. They hang two of the men from a bridge over the Euphrates River. This footage is seen around the world and at the U.S. Marine base just outside Fallujah. You know, a lot of times on the news you see things that just make you so violently angry and you just wish you could do something about it. That, that was one time in my life that I was actually in a position to do something about it. Papa Ditch is ready. His Marine commanders plan a surgical strike to find the killers. The Pentagon intervenes and instead orders a large-scale assault on the entire city. It's the news 25-year-old Sergeant Josue Magana has been waiting for. When we got the order that we're going to push into the city, it was it was exciting. It was, it was kind of like a, a sigh of relief. You know, like, finally we're going to go and, you know, this is what we came here to do. The city streets are eerily quiet. 1,600 Sunni insurgents are hiding in the labyrinth of concrete buildings and narrow streets. On April 4th, Sergeant Papadich does a final check of his Abrams tank. The assault on Fallujah has begun. Three days in, Papa Ditch spots a group of insurgents ducking in and out of doorways. He goes after them, tracking his Abrams down a narrow street. It's probably not the most ideal situation for a tank to be in, but every one I kill today is one less that somebody's got to fight tomorrow. So when I have them engaged, I'm not going to let them get away. Then, an insurgent fires an RPG. The tank absorbs the explosion. As Papadich readies his 50 caliber machine gun to return fire, a second shooter launches another RPG. I never seen him. And when I went into my machine gun, I heard a and bam, that's when the rocket hit me right, right in the helmet. Blew my helmet apart, blew, uh, blew my one eye out of my head and uh, knocked my other eye down to my sinus cavity. So for me, what I saw was a real bright flash of light, like a real, like a super intense camera flash and then nothing, just darkness. And I could hear this like humming in my ears, like if you took a radio and put it on the static and then cranked the volumes, like it's ah, just in my ears, I couldn't hear anything. A news cameraman 
takes this video of Papa Ditch moments after the attack. I was very sleepy, like I just needed to go to sleep, and I knew that's a good way to die, so don't, don't go to sleep, just stay awake. His fellow Marines carry him off the tank and rush him to a medevac site. A doctor tries to repair his right eye. And I remember telling the doc, I said, look, I said, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to try and cooperate with you, but I can't guarantee you anything once you go try to pull things out of, out of my eye. He loses that eye and most of the vision in his left one. On the streets of Fallujah, Sergeant Josue Magana and his infantry company continue the assault. When you bust through that door, you're, you're just kind of ready for anything that comes your way. You know, you're wondering if, yeah, if there is someone looking at you, there's someone waiting for you. Elsewhere in the city, Marines take fire from insurgents hidden around the mosque. They respond by launching a Hellfire missile and a 500-pound laser-guided bomb into a perimeter wall. Arab news channel Al Jazeera broadcasts images of injured and dead, including women and children. The channel claims they're victims of the U.S. bombing. The Marines now believe they're within days of securing the entire city of Fallujah. But the televised images inflame Iraqis. Al Jazeera and many other media outlets spread a message that the United States was being indiscriminate in the use of force, was killing innocents, and that message resonated with the people of Iraq. Hey, watch your fire! The next day, President Bush orders a ceasefire. The Marines remain in Fallujah, but their orders are to not initiate contact. They're upset with the decision. They want to finish the job they started. We know it's not coming from our commanders. It's not, you know, it's coming from a lot higher, telling us, hey, this is, we're going to control you guys from, you know, a thousand miles away, and this is how we want to do it. The ceasefire makes Marines holding their ground in the city easy targets. Where is he? Hey, is that Friendly's on, on the road? Yeah, this one right here. Yeah, he's in there. Oh, we got Friendly's on the road. Well, it was one-sided. Um, we still got fired at, mortar rounds. Um, pretty much all we can do is kind of, just kind of hunker down and, and just not get hit. On April 26, Magana and his company get fed up with being sitting ducks. They secure two houses near a mosque the site of frequent insurgent sniper fire, and wait. It isn't long before the enemy comes knocking. The house started, you know, shaking and explosions, and Marines started yelling and firing, and our house started going, you know, Marines from our house started firing back. And it was just kind of like, holy crap, you know, this is it. Moments later, Magana hears screaming coming from Marines on the roof. He instinctively runs to help. I heard a pop, and I remember hitting the floor, and I didn't think initially that I was shot. Bring him in here! I started kind of feeling around my stomach, and my finger went inside of a hole. So I kind of looked down a little bit, and the exit wound, you know, my finger went in the exit wound. I guess something in my, in my head was telling me, you know, you're, you're not going to pull for this one. And uh, all I can think of is, you know, I'm not going to see my daughter again. Magana asks his sergeant to get a letter to his three-year-old daughter. I just wanted to have something with my writing 
you know, something that I read with my hand. It says, Hello, my little baby. It's your daddy. Just wanted to write you these few little lines. Well, as you know, probably old enough to understand. I'm in a better place now. Now, I know there is no better place than to have you in my arms again at home. But God had other plans for me. I just wanted to tell you how much I love you. Ganya's comrades carry him on a makeshift stretcher. They get him to safety, but he feels deep regret. I let the Marines down, you know, I should have made a better decision. And that's what really stopped me and really killed me then. After a bloody three-week battle, the Marines pull out of Fallujah at the end of April. Foreign fighters now flood into the city. The perceived U.S. defeat strengthens Al-Qaeda's control over the Sunni insurgency. Soon, another televised scandal does even more to strengthen Al-Qaeda's power in Iraq. Media outlets release photographs of American soldiers abusing Iraqi detainees at Abu Ghraib prison. The pictures of that abuse served as incredibly effective recruiting tools. Thousands and thousands of jihadis were created by that abuse. I can't tell you how many guys we buried. American soldiers we buried because of that. That was the worst time for that to happen. You took a hornet's nest and you, and you literally threw it on a bonfire. In May 2004, Al-Qaeda in Iraq leader Abu Musab al-Zarqawi responds to the shocking photos at Abu Ghraib. He beheads American businessman Nicholas Berg in his Fallujah torture studio. The video shows up on the internet. I watched that Nicholas Berg beheading over 100 times, easily. Every time we went on a mission, I'd watch it, make my guys watch it. I used to have the time memorized. I think 27 seconds to cut his head off. 27 seconds. I would make sure that everyone fed that into the machine. What we were fighting um, was, was not us. They're not us. They're insurgents beheading people. I read and criticize for... You know, the, whatever happened in Abu Ghraib, whether it was like the, the nude photos and the humiliation, I'm like, okay, humiliation or, or murder and execution, which one's worse? The insurgency is still growing by the day, but the U.S. hands over power to an Iraqi interim government. Private Colby Buzzle is told that Iraqis will begin to take over the fighting as well. I remember our commanders telling us that, you know, our job is basically the in support role. Basically, we would act like um, Iraq's big brother, you know, if the younger brother was getting beat up or picked on, we would show up and, and take care of it. But whenever the bullets start flying, the new Iraqi forces are nowhere to be found. As the summer comes to an end, U.S. commanders decide it's time for a rematch in Fallujah. Between April and November, Fallujah looked like it had just become hardened, hardened as an insurgent stronghold, and it just needed, you know, to be cleared out. Like, I mean, just spring cleaning, like, just swept out. Many American troops are like Prakash, thrilled to finally face their enemies head on. It's a huge adre adrenaline rush, that's it. That's, I don't know, it's fun. When I found out we were going to Fallujah, I was um, over the moon. I was so excited. I was so pumped up. This was everything I'd lived for. On November 8th, Operation Phantom Fury begins. Artillery batteries unleash a non-stop barrage. Infantry Marine Private Alex Nickel waits at the edge of the city and takes it all in. Fireworks really are kind of lame now. After you see like all this air support and whatnot coming down, it's, it's pretty impressive. I think they get them all, but there's nooks and crannies everywhere. 